Welcome back everyone. In this video we're going to look at another way that we can describe certain types of sets called intervals using what we call interval notation. Okay, so in the last video we looked at um, the set of real numbers between 0 and 1. Okay, and the way that we described or wrote down that set in set notation was x such that uh, x lies between 0 and 1. Okay, this is called an interval. Okay, if you, if you wanted to picture something like this on a number line, the way that you would draw it is you'd have, well, zeros here, ones over here, and you're trying to include all the numbers between zero and one. All right, and we'd write it something like that. So what this line up here represents are all these numbers between zero and one. These circles here represent the end points of your interval. Now, in this particular example, the circles are not colored in. Okay, we call these open circles. So open circles. That means that you're not including those numbers. Okay, so that's what an interval is. And now we're trying to describe types of intervals with set notation, and we're also going to introduce interval notation, which is a bit of a, a quicker way to write down these very particular kinds of sets. All right, so what kinds of intervals can we have? Well, we've seen one here, okay? You're just talking about the numbers between two endpoints, but not including those endpoints. All right, let's, I'm just gonna write out a bunch of different types of intervals on a bunch of different number lines. I'm just gonna use some general endpoints called A and B, okay? These are just numbers of some kind. So we've seen that one there, okay? That's just an interval of numbers between, you know, zero and one between A and B, not including A and B. If we did want to include them, the way that you could draw them on the number line is just to color in those circles. All right, so that would signify all the numbers between A and B, including A and B. These colored in circles, we're gonna call them closed circles, okay? Uh, another kind of interval that you might have. Well, what if you want to include one of those numbers, A or B, but not the other one? Well, you just, the one that you're including, you color in. So let's say we're including A, and the one that you're excluding, we just leave not colored in. There you go, okay, that's very, that's, a, that's an interval. Um, what else could you have? Well, what if you had the number A, all right, and you just wanted to describe all the numbers less than or equal to A. So what you do is you'd color in that A circle, all the numbers less than A would be to the left on this number line. Okay, and you could just draw an arrow like that, pointing down into the negative direction. Okay, that's just telling you all the numbers less than or equal to A. Okay, you could do the same thing in the other direction. If you wanted to talk about all the numbers greater than B. Okay, if you don't want to include B, you put an open circle, but your arrow is going to point that way for all the numbers greater than B. Okay, um, so these are different types of intervals that you can have. All right, what we want to try and do is write them with set notation, and then we're also going to write them with interval notation as well. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so the first one here, this one with the zero and one, okay, the way that we can describe this using what we call interval notation is, well, they're going to kind of look like coordinates. So you want to not confuse coordinates with interval notation. They look very, very similar. They mean completely different things though, okay? So the way that we're gonna use interval notation to write this set notation in shorthand is, well, we need to know we, what the end points of our interval are. And we're gonna write it like this, okay? So if you were including, or actually in this case, if we're excluding an end point, we start by writing a round bracket like that, okay? Then you're gonna write down your leftmost end point, I guess you could call it. So the lower end point. In this case, for this first example, our lower end point is zero. So we write zero. Then comma, and then you write your most right-hand end point or the, the largest end point. And that would, in this case, be a one. And you just say, okay, we're including one or excluding one. In this case, we're excluding it. So you put another round bracket, okay? This here, means exactly the same thing as this here, okay? 
This one we just wrote down, this 0, 1, that's called interval notation. The one over here, that's your set notation. Okay, we're just writing it in shorthand. Okay, so let's do it for this second one here. We've got this um, closed interval between A and B. So if you are including an endpoint, you use a square bracket like that. Okay, so we're including our lower endpoint A. Our higher endpoint is B, and we are also including that. So that would be how you write that particular interval. Okay. All right, the next one. Well, our lower endpoint is A, and we're including that. So square bracket. However, we're not including B. So for B, you would use a round bracket. Okay, that's all it is. Very straightforward. Okay, instead of having to write out this whole sort of set notation thing. So if I was to write set notation for this one here, closed interval between A and B, I'd write it like this. I'd go all the values of X such that X is between A and B, but also including A and B. I'd write it like that, okay? Or if I wanted to do the next one, I'd write it so I've got X such that um, X is greater than or equal to A, but less than B, we're not including B. Okay, that's using set notation. So interval notation, set notation, they're equivalent. Okay, it's just that when we're talking about intervals, we can use this much shorter way of writing them out. All right, so these last two here. Um, so for this second last one, we've got all the numbers less than or equal to A. So if you wanted to write that in interval notation, think about what your lower end point is. Okay, your, well, there is no lower end point. You're going to be talking about all the numbers less than A. What's the smallest number there or what's the most sort of negative number there? Well, negative infinity. Okay, and that's not really a number. It's just sort of like a, a place that you're trying to get to. But that's where your starting point is. Okay. Um, now, if you're, if you're trying to reference infinity as one of your end points, you never include it. Okay, because infinity is not a number. All right. So if we're trying to reference infinity, or rather in this case, negative infinity as our starting point, we use a, a round bracket. Our starting point is negative infinity. And our ending point, or our higher point is A. And in this case, we are including A. There you go. So that is how you write that particular interval. If you wanted to use set notation, you'd use something like this. All the values X such that X is less than or equal to A. Okay. Um, same sort of thing for this last one here. All right. This is just saying all your X values greater than B, but not including B. Okay. And in interval notation, well, you write down your, your start point first. So we're starting at B, but we're not including B. So a round bracket. Our end point, well, there is kind of no end point. You just keep going on forever to positive infinity. Um, and again, when you reference infinity, you must use a round bracket. And you don't have to put a positive sign. You can if you want, but you don't have to. You can just say infinity like that. If you wanted to use set notation, you'd write it as x such that x is strictly greater than b. That's it. Okay. So that's interval notation. All right. Now, there's a cup one more thing that I want to talk about, um, and then we'll talk about some some most commonly used intervals. So there's one situation that I want to try and describe where you might be including all the numbers less than a, as well as all the numbers greater than b. So you might might write it on a number line looking something like this. So it's basically all the numbers except for the ones between A and B. How do you write that? Okay, well, we have to join two sets of numbers together. And if you go back a couple of videos, we can join two sets together using the union of those two sets. So you just write out those two intervals in interval notation, like so. So for that interval over here on the left, you'd write it as uh, from negative infinity to A, and including A, and we're going to join that interval together using the union symbol with the interval on the right, which is from B to positive infinity. That's it, okay? That's how you join two intervals together like that. 
All right, now some most commonly used intervals. So one of them is just the positive real numbers. Okay, so on a number line, that would look like this. You're starting at zero, but you're not including zero because zero is neither positive nor negative. If you're just talking about strictly positive numbers, you can't include zero in that interval. Okay, so that's what it would look like on a number line. In interval notation, well, that's equivalent to this one here with B, um, except we're starting at zero. So in interval notation, you write it as zero to infinity, like that, okay? Because this is a very special kind of interval, it's a very commonly used interval, we actually can write it another way. So we're just saying all the real numbers that are positive. And we write that with a little superscript plus that you can see here. So it's not r to the power of plus. That's not what that says. It just says all the positive real numbers. So anything greater than zero. All right, you can do the same thing for negative real numbers. All right, on a number line, that would look something like this. Okay, just starting at zero and going backwards. In interval notation, that'd be negative infinity to zero, not including zero. Um, but we can actually write it using r minus, okay? and that just means all the negative real numbers. All right, there's one more thing that I wanna show you how to do, and that is how you can write all the numbers except for one, okay? So let's say you've got a number line um, and there's, you know, A here. Okay, so we want to describe all numbers except or excluding A. Okay, what would that even look like on a number line? Well, if you're including all the numbers, you just draw a line all the way across with arrows on either end. Okay, so you might draw it something like that. That's all the numbers, all real numbers, and you could just write that as R. Okay. But we don't want all real numbers. I want all of them except for A. Okay, so we have to just modify this a little bit. All right, so we're going to draw two parts to this. It's going to be an arrow like that joined onto an arrow like that. So it's almost a whole line, except there's a little hole here where A should be. Okay, so it's all the real numbers except for A. You're not including it there. And the way that we write that down is like this. So R for all real numbers, backslash, you can treat that as the word except for, and then you have to write a little set that only includes the number A that you're trying to exclude, okay? So this would be described as all the real numbers except for A, okay? You could also write it as the union of two sets. So what you could write it as would be from negative infinity up to a, not including a, joined onto the interval from a to positive infinity, like that. And those two things are equivalent, okay? That and that are the same thing. Um, which one you write is up to you. I prefer to write it like that one um, because it's a bit quicker. Um, it's a bit more elegant, I think. Um, so there you go, okay? That's how we write our sets of intervals using interval notation. Okay, so review the video, make sure you understand how everything works, and we will see you next time.